Well, for more on this story, I'm joined now by world affairs analyst Marco Vicencino. What more do we know about who's responsible? No one has claimed credit, but it's widely to believe to be Islamic militants. Some even say the local ISIS unit, the branch in Egypt. Um, this obviously last week there was a killing of two police officers near Egypt's most uh, touristed site, that's a Giza. This week, this, today it was near Luxor, as you have, but didn't succeed. No tourists were killed, but it was a serious attempt. Um, so what they're trying to do basically is the, the strategy of these radicals is basically to target the economy, target the government, security officials, judges. But in terms of the economy, you're looking at tourism and foreign direct investment. Tourism, obviously, is a huge hard currency owner. In terms of foreign direct investment, the timing of today's bombing was quite uh, quite. You know, good because for the Islamists in the sense that uh, there's a major trade pan-African pan trade investment conference taking place somewhere else in Egypt, in Sharm el Sheikh on the Sinai, where the World Bank president is attending and also President Sisi. So to try to create that, that image of instability in the country. There's been a lot of instability since really the overthrow of Mubarak, hasn't there? Um, the Mubarak in 2011, the instability and the turmoil that you had from 2011, January 2011, when Mubarak was overthrown, till July of 2013, when Morsi was overthrown, that two year period was like, was turmoil that's usually associated with political transition. After, 2013, after July of 2013, when, uh, um, uh, when Morsi was removed, uh, from that point onwards, the nature of the turmoil changed. It became more of a uh, full-scale insurgency in the Sinai and also violence of targeted assassinations of security officials. Hundreds have been assassinated in terms of security officials and also judges a lot in recent times. How much of an impact do you think that this latest attack is going to have on tourism? It'll have a, a, a very ser a fairly serious impact in the sense that the biggest attack in Egypt, obviously, was 1997 in Luxor and this near where today's attack was then 58 tourists were killed and four Egyptians today no tourists were killed but when you look at what's going on in the region in terms of quote unquote ISIS operating all over the region it gives it creates that image of omni omnipresence that obviously discourages tourists from coming in once again tourism is a very important uh, currency or owner, or owner for Egypt and of course, this is all sort of fueling this crisis in the Mediterranean, isn't it? As we're seeing just waves of migrants trying to flee those countries like Egypt and Libya and Syria. It's a lot. I think the case with Egypt and Libya are a bit different in the sense that Egypt is is a country that's is a government that's fairly it's a fairly strong government. Uh, granted, in the Sinai, there's a full scale conflict, but but it does control the country uh, economically. It's it's on its way slowly to recovering. Uh, it has aid and support from the United States it's in Egypt and uh, sorry in the Gulf. It's very much what you call a real state. Libya is a fragmented state. Libya is a broken state. Libya is where two government two governments are claiming authority over the country and currently on the UN auspices in Rabat in uh, Morocco uh, there's a process a peace process going on they may be signing something fairly soon but before they bring the country under control it's going to take quite a long time okay Marco thank you Marco thank Vincenzino you. there our global affairs analyst